one of my all-time favorite authors. I believe this might be our third interview. 11th book, The Arsonist, is just out. Sue Miller is the author of, as I said, so many favorites. The Lakeshore Limited, The Senator's Wife. I'll go sort of backwards. Lost in the Forest. I'll skip around a little while I was gone. Family Pictures, Inventing the Abbots, and, of course, The Good Mother. And, as I said, this is the 11th novel. Sue Miller, welcome to Reading with Robin. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And, I, and, and as I was... Um, setting this up and thinking about it and going through, I was saying to you some pictures and all, I was thinking of, of the conversations and I have most of them some of them are on CDs, oh. so till I mm-hmm. ever go through, but I remember our conversations and I remember um, certainly how much I loved these books and being able to share them with people, so when I saw that you had this book come out The Arsonist, I was just, you know thrilled, <laughs> Sue Miller has a new book, yay that's oh, all I had nice. to know Thank you makes my summer and and that it's set it's a summer book and and it's so um greatly set around this idea of of summer people and the from away sort of thing and this whole notion of belonging to a community and and you know the people that come and go and the people that are there to to handle the the area all year round is such a fascinating one and it's just a delicious type of of book to settle into in the summer um so what what does that mean to you, you know, this idea of summer people and and how that uh, the community sort of, um, I don't know, views these people that sort of come and go as opposed to the, the long-timers? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I've been a summer person in several different places, actually probably all my life. When I was young, very little, we used to go to a sort of primitive camp that my grandparents, actually my great-grandfather, had bought near Bangor, Maine. Wow. Um, But there were no other people there. There was really not a (laughs) community to speak of. It was very isolated. So during those years, I didn't have the experience of living in such a community. But later, from the time I was about 12 on, my parents summered in a place where there was a small year-round population and then a flood of summer people, and then have also summered in a couple of other uh, places. And it's quite variable, it seems to me, the relations between summer people and year-round people. But I think inevitably there is some tension in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, I really wanted to explore that. And it's a tension that I think is hard for the summer people to deeply acknowledge. I think the year-round people are aware of it. Um, but the summer people would prefer not to be aware of it, generally speaking, and not to be reminded of it. And um, I think it's something that they sort of suppress in a, in a certain way. It's a class issue that they are not comfortable being thought of as being part of. Um, so to me, that's that kind of um, difference in, um, in awareness um, seems very fascinating. And just such a great nugget to start a story. I mean, so mm-hmm. then you then you have this immediate sense of um, coming back and who's still there and the people. And one of my favorite parts, certainly, and I'm reading this story, and I'm speaking with Sue Miller. We're talking about the arsonist novel. I, you know what? I get these things so far ahead. So this came out at the end of June, I think, mm-hmm. or June? Yes. Sometime in June? Okay. Late so. June, yeah. um, Okay, so it's you know it's quite new still. You're out there. You're, I'm speaking to you from Maine. So you spoke last night at Longfellow. Is that where yes, you are? Yes, in Portland. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I we're headed to Portland in a in a little bit. Um, I think a week or so. So uh-huh. I always like to see where are the bookshops. Wherever I am going, it's where are the bookshops. So I I see that's where you were and. Um, you know, what's that like? You know, so were were there many people sort of that are summary people that were at this event last night? There were very few. There was a horrendous oh, thunder, no. lightning, rainstorm at this event last night. Oh, no. I'm so sorry it to hear was, that. Yeah. And, you know, so dramatic outside. As I was walking over, I just knew it was going. I mean, and this is sort of typical of the tour. You just never know you don't what know. you're going to walk into, no. how many people will be there. But you sure. sort of, if you're there for the people who are there. And there were some Absolutely. very lovely people there. Um, I'm but sure. It was just a terrible <laughs> lightning and thunder and you know I could see people everywhere in, in Portland you know a lot there are a lot of tourists disappearing back to their hotels oh and dear their because because uh, you know. otherwise you know if you're in there safely how cozy is that to have 
Sue Miller there talking about the arsonist with this background going on. <laughs> You know, once you're there, you know, there's this idea, I guess, some people, you know, whatever, it keeps them away. But if you're in there, I, I can't imagine a better place to be, you know. Well, it was fun, and, and they had yeah. people, the people who were there had wonderful questions. And so it had the quality, really, of a real conversation. Um, there were so few people there. It was nice. Which nice. is nice. Yeah, so that's nice. Yeah. So you look on that yeah. side of that side of things. And, exactly. uh, and, and And also when people are in that sort of summer mode, just sort of poking in and out of the bookshops and deciding which books to read. The independent bookstores do such an amazing job hand selling these novels, you know, yes, and yes. and I love to see, you know, what everybody's sort of reading, of course, and and what's sort of, you know, is going around through the town when people are sort of, you know, spending that kind of time either at the beach or just like sort of in town or, you know, a concentrated amount of summer spent with the books and mm-hmm. um and so to me, you know, that's what your your books just are that kind of a treat. You know, if I were walking around, that's what I'd be talking about, whatever book I'm holding, um, which mm-hmm. is why I like to hold an actual book with, uh-huh. an, actual, with an actual cover. Yeah. And, you know, so so that's um, – but that is part of book tour. And, you, you know, like you say, you yeah. know that. And, you know, you don't have a million other things going on. So I'm sure it was quite relaxing for you. It is, actually. I do have a million things going on. I'm moving house and so forth. So being on tour is, and you know, sort of is restful at this point for me. It's lovely, and I've had, you know, wonderful audiences elsewhere, and I'm sure I will for the last oh, couple of days of this tour in Maine. So I'm sure you will. I just think it's the perfect kind of place to be for summer, you know, in tour, touring time in summer in New England. I mean, that's yeah. just a quintessential fun. summer tour, I would think, and. So the family, all right, so the, the family that's coming back to this home, they, it was their summer home, and this couple is moving back. Um, so, and I also, one of the things I love about a book that takes place in, in a home and would, is like when the adult children come back. So mm-hmm. Frankie, the daughter, has come back from, from being away and spending many years in different parts of Africa. I don't know if she's in Kenya or, and all I was she's thinking been, was, I yeah, hope she's she didn't come Africa, back. Yeah, she's been in Africa, based in Kenya, and then Kenya. she's doing aid work, and mo- most recently in Sudan. This takes place, the book takes place in the late 90s. Um, right, so she, she's not coming back with the Ebola. Well, we hope. No, all I was no. thinking was, you know, Sue puts this book out, the daughter's coming, the prodigal daughter returns from Africa, and look what's going on here now. Who knows, yeah. you know, when you... Yeah. When you have a book come out, what what else is going on in the world, you know? Yeah. But um, I'm sure that that's not what most people are thinking. But I I just thought, what's in the news now? That does yeah. happen a lot, right? When you write a book, I mean, you write a story, you write it whenever it is till it comes out. Who knows what's going to be happening? Exactly. In, I remember the with the senator's wife, um, uh, Elliot's sister was yes. suddenly caught. <laughs> and I know. I was going out on a tour for that and. I yeah, know how perfect. When something in the news really made a connection to, and actually, I think the Washington Post called and asked me to if I would care to write a comment on Elias Spitzer. Uh, <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that. Uh, that yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Who would have thought there could have been a scandal that might have come out about somebody in the politics when? Yeah. Was, that was such a great book, Sue. Oh, my God, did Thank I love you. that book. Oh, I know. It's, it's funny because when I was reading through the bio and, I, and just, uh, you know, just that, that idea of all of these books and you just, I don't know, quickly through my mind what I was doing when I was reading them, where I was, mm-hmm. what else was happening. You know, you sort of connect a book that you love to a time period. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so, so back to the story, The Arsonist. And it's quite a title, really. You know, it. I mean, how was it? Was that your original idea for the title? That I mean, it's it's sort of right out there. I mean, the arsonist. Yeah, we went back and forth about it. Um, but to me, the sort of the question of this, there's a series of fires that get set in this summer community. Right. Is sort of we find that at the beginning. The sure. Yeah. There's no surprise. And then right. it becomes clear fairly early on that they are being set. But, I mean, the first one seems as though it might be an accident, and then of course the question becomes, you know, who is setting it. And then it also turns out that the fires are being set exclusively in the home of summer people, which brings mm. to brings to the surface a lot of tensions that have been submerged for a long time in this town. Um and, and kind of an awareness of class issues there that people have to look at anyway. 
um, and which remind Frankie, the aid worker, home from Africa, actually, of some of the sort of quasi-colonial relations that exist between aid workers who are helping mm-hmm. people after all, but also who live in a very different way, in a much more comfortable way than a lot of the people that they're working with. So Frankie thinks of that. Uh, a lot of parallels. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of parallels but, um, to draw. To draw. Yeah. And, well, the, and the and the couple, um, you know, our our main couple there, Sylvia, and Alfie, uh, Frankie's parents, Liz, and she, she has a sister as well, Liz, who is married to Clark. So so we've got this family, and what that's one of the things interesting to me about Frankie is so that um, so we have Sylvia and Alfie who have decided to make this um, summer home their main home, and they've moved from mm-hmm. Connecticut. But Frankie, being older than Liz, um, the house before in Connecticut, because it also just sort of brings to mind what what is home and the memories we have about home, and certainly mm-hmm. with age differences of siblings, having those different memories. So this family has moved around a bunch with um, the academics of their their de- – we're both parents, I guess, right? Or they've yeah, moved their around. their father is the one who, who drives and moves because he's right. – repeatedly fails to get in. So he's moved around a bit. But the last Mm -hmm. home, Frankie doesn't have quite that same time to settle into. And that idea, and it really sort of struck a nerve with me when when parents move, and depending on your age, you know, and your place in the family, what that home means to you if it hasn't been, you know, this house that everybody's lived in the same amount of time. And um, so, you know, so you you read a book, and then you've got these side thoughts. And, And on the phone this morning, I'm speaking with, the arsonist, the author of The Arsonist. I'm not <laughs> speaking to the arsonist herself. <laughs> Sue Miller, <laughs> just spreading rumors and all sorts of things on Reading with Robin, like I always do. And you can find Sue on Facebook. And um, and your, what, what is your website? Do you have a site? I don't have a website. I didn't I think would... so, Sue. No. <laughs> do you have a site? I'm or did I miss reach. it? <laughs> you are, <laughs> I have all your numbers, Sue. I can find you uh-huh. anywhere now. Good. <laughs> But you can find Sue on Facebook. There's an author page for that. Um, so, all right, so we're back to this family. And so the tension of the town and, and the mimicking of that really uh, spilling over into this couple. So they have an, you know, they're settling into this summer home as their main home. And I really enjoy reading about their relationship because the way you, I mean, just one of the reasons I love your book so much is, just really get these people and understand where they've sort of come from. And I just love these characters. I just, you know, so talk a little bit about this marriage and what's going on with them. Yeah, there's a, well, it's a long-standing marriage. These are Frankie's parents and they're in their right. 70s. And it, it's been a difficult marriage. The, the wife in particular, the mother, Sylvia is a, is a bit of a prickly person. She's been, over many, many years, disappointed in this man. She saw as a great, great intellect when she met him and when she married mm-hmm. him and has only slowly come to see that he's, uh, his interests his, are not permanent. They just they keep shifting around, and that's the liability for him in trying to get tenure in part. Um, and now he's failing. He has um, he has, has, has symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, and then during the course of the book, is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And the sense that she has that she's going to be in charge of him when she has at this point in her life mm-hmm. so little affection left for him is very difficult for her, very complicated and difficult. And Frankie comes home to this, and you know her father has always been the more loving, the easier for her. Her mother is more judgmental, more, more prickly, um, as she would be in the situation she's in. So right. it, it, their relationship is very complicated. It's seen somewhat through Frankie's eyes. Sometimes we're with Sylvia, the mother in her head. Um, but it, there's a kind of, for me, there was an interest in, in drawing, in looking at the two relationships. Frankie, in the course of this summer, falls in love with a man who's, in, who's bought the town paper and is editing it. And then she then had to came. fall in love with him. That was so great. I'm like, yes, that will be her man. <laughs> yes. So but then the parallel, I mean, there's him. another another marriage that we're looking at, it, which is sort of at, at the end of the marriage rather than mm-hmm. at the beginning of a relationship. And it seemed to me of interest to be looking at these two at the same time and, and sad in some ways. Yeah, it's just everything's so bittersweet and, and thinking about this relationship Frankie has with her mother and um, and and Sylvia's, uh, I was reading 
I, was, I marked this book all up. I mean, I mark it. I bent the pages back. It is an advanced reader copy, so I didn't mark up the hardcover. Just so you know, it's okay. all out here. But she says she was bitter about all this. She knew that and jealous in some way. She supposed an easy, hateful emotion she struggled with. So that, you know, they had this different, you know, of course, different relationships, different parents. But mm-hmm. what her place in the marriage and uh, as a parent is and, and you know, between um, – the two parents, the one that sort of gets stuck with that stuff, the SAT stuff and the uh, after-school homework and that that sort of business and allowing their dad, you know, Alfie, to take over that other sort of role of, like you say, more patient, loving sort of parent, but why, mm-hmm. you know, so... I thought, oh no, Sylvia, this is sometimes yeah. this this is what happened, right? I mean, that's it's so real, you know. And um, but like you say, yeah, the loving, the thoughts of um, the loving thoughts that are needed, you know, to sustain a marriage, and then when somebody's failing, and then what that feels like, and guilt and remorse, and and a conversation that um, that is talked about in this book that uh, Sylvia had with her grandmother, who she spent time with in this home. You know, and just yeah. what the expectation was with this man, and sort of deciding that was going to be okay, or you know, all the choices that we make. You know, it's yeah. just um, what a great book. Do you do book club? Um, do you do do you Skype with book clubs, or dare I ask it's such a silly technical I, question? I have a little bit, but not a yeah. lot. I, you know, sometimes I, in an earlier age, I went around to a number of book clubs that on a book tour, which was fun. So it's an interesting thing to do to sort of hear people's reactions. Although oh, it's because... always a little dismaying when people don't like something in your book and say, why did you do that? Well, how do, well, but you know, it gets them to think, certainly. And then do you feel sort of protective a bit of your characters and, and the way you see them as opposed to, you know, it's what readers will bring to your, to your work, you know, and what they're, yeah. some, some people can't handle or don't look as fondly on certain topics because of, you know, whatever's going on, agendas or whatever, so. No, I mean, but, you have to allow people to have, if you're going to do a book club, you have to allow I people guess. to have honest responses. You can't go in and say, I would like to be adored now. <laughs> um, it just doesn't work that way. It shouldn't. It should work that way if you've gone to all the trouble of showing up and bringing a bottle of wine or something. But, yes, no, you're right. You're right. There's that. Um, but are, does anything ever surprise, you know, you ever remember being really surprised where, you know, you just absolutely didn't see a certain part of um, of a storyline being quite so impactful or, you know, get, getting a reaction well, Sometimes like that. people pick up on things that I, that I hadn't really even thought that hard about. Um, mm-hmm. with, with this book, one of the questions last night was whether I had intended for the father, Alfie, ever to fall under suspicion for, for having set these fires. Oh, interesting. And I was, I was um, amazed, actually, um, oh, because it, very interesting. it had never occurred to me that he might be. Um, and I don't know quite why I didn't probe enough to find out why this person thought that might be the case. She said she had decided he could not have. And That's I interesting, though. I her, really you know, hadn't thought about like him. That. Yeah, no, yeah. I hadn't. I think that that's one of the neat things about book club, you know, and about things that some people just read in such a detailed way. I don't, you know, because this is called The Arsonist, and we know, you know, like you say in the beginning, the first fire um, has come to light, and we don't know what's happened, but then there's a second one, and you can, you know, you sort of put that together. I just read the book. I don't think, well, who could it be? You know, maybe towards yeah. the end, you know, start. Because I just want to be along for the ride. I want to watch the movie. I don't want to see the end of the trailer. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's kind of how I, um, you know, uh, enjoy and take it all in. Are you, what well, kind I'm of reader are you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't try and be smarter than the author. What ha, yes. What's your process when you're reading? Do you try and look for clues? I, or, I mean, some jump out, but, you know, that idea. Yeah. I mean, I don't often – well, one – you know, I think if you're engaged with the characters, that's it. You do want to just be with them and live through mm-hmm. this thing with them and sort of try to absorb slowly what it is that the, that the writer seems to be doing with these characters and, and sort of the, the meaning that the whole book seems to be accruing in some way or another. So right. that's the way I approach reading. And, and in fact, I, I used to, when I was young, my parents never had book jackets on books. So you would take mm. a book off the shelf without knowing anything about it. And, and no flap copy, as we call it. And yeah. that was wonderful to me. You just, if you, if you were drawn in immediately on the first few pages, you just read without having any idea really 
what this book was about, none. And I'm sorry in a way that there's so much um, information given to us ahead of reading books now that there is flap copy, which essentially tells you what in the end you're to make of this book often. Um, and I, it's, there's something quite magical about sort of entering a book blind in that way without knowing what you're supposed to be taking from it, without knowing... I mean, they usually don't give the ending away in flap copy, but without knowing where it's going and what's going to be happening in this book and what you ought to be thinking about as you read through it. I think there's something lost in that. In that I really, could not agree thing. more. Yes. Yeah. I could not but, agree more with you. But I'm it's fascinated. Part of the publishing process. To well, because it's the marketing, copy. right? The exactly, marketing yeah. and and the the nasty business of the business. But I'm fascinated with the fact that your the 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 uh, covers were all taken off of the books. Now, was that to protect them? Was that because they took up more room that way? I mean, what was the thinking process? Or just I don't so know. you and I don't, know. A lot of them were modern library books, and I'm not sure they had covers at that time okay. necessarily. So there might have been that, but probably they just were in the way. They got torn up and yeah, ripped torn. up and just got thrown right. away. So, and I'm That's sure my right. parents didn't think they were very central to anything. And I remember right. when I first married my husband, he, uh, he all his books still had the jackets on them because he saw jacket art as being integral to the book and I mm-hmm. and I had I never had. I was shocked all my books had the jackets removed. Isn't that funny? Of so, all the things yeah. that we bring to a marriage, imagine you looking at his books thinking, My, they're awfully dressed up and yours were like, <laughs> just, yours naked. Was just naked books from Sue Miller. And you know, my mother always took the jackets off when she loaned a book to somebody. So mm. she knew that the book was out. Not, I mean, not that she loaned them all over the place, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure she remembered who because there were probably just a few people she would do that with. But I remember going to pick something up and thinking, oops, there's no book in here. Oh, someone must have it. But um, I've often said on, on the show for many years, and it's true, I read very little. I mean, I knew Sue Miller had a new book out called The Arsonist, done. That's all I want to know. I really, um, and when I have a favorite author, that's that's all I want to know. And if, if there's a debut novel, which I love, a debut novel, all of that, you know, the cover may catch my eye or I may sort of hear people talking about it, or mostly I just pick it up and I'm sort of aware of that. But I do not read, I'm interested in the blurbs sometimes, but the more I've done this, the more I realize they're just, you know, uh, the editor's friends, you know, or the, all of their authors and this sort of thing. It's a lot of that. So that doesn't yeah. really hold much weight with me because I figure, okay, all of these great authors, I love, love this, so there's that chance. But So there's that. But in the meantime, it's more just this sense of I want to read this book like it would have been reading in your parents' house. I would just grab it and and go, and I don't want to be influenced, and I don't read reviews. I do cut them out just so I remember to get that book if the you know if it perks my interest just by the title and the you know that's mm-hmm. all. So I I agree with you but I'm not willing to take my my covers off of my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't but anymore either. You'll be I love <laughs> that idea though. I yeah. do. Yeah, I think that's great. Plus you probably could absolutely get like even if it's three more books up on the shelf it'd be well worth the space. Because <laughs> um and you talked about moving. Now what what's with the books like how does that happen or are you able to part with books or, you know, what's, what does moving look like for you and books? The books are an enormous part of it, just boxes and boxes and boxes of books. Um, and I actually had so much fun this time. My, my goddaughter and her sister and then my granddaughter all packed the books for me, um, mm. which was, they were so sweet. You know, they were very fastidious about getting them alphabetical and, Good. you know, okay. all this sort of thing. They were just wonderful. But, we try to cull a little bit when we're mm-hmm. when we move, um, but I think we're at the point now where we just have the writers we love and the books we love, and we don't. We just didn't give up very many. Just maybe yeah, a dozen hard. or so. It's hard to do that, but I was imagining when you said with the two moves and thinking, that was where I'm automatically my mind went to. What do they do with those books? You know, how does that happen? And yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. You move those, and you, you and know, and get shelves or build shelves for them. New, yeah. Oh, that's so fabulous. I hope <laughs> I would say you could post those all over your website, but no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> I love seeing writers. Uh, that was that's another uh, thing I'm working on. I'm going to ask 
my favorite writers to just take a snapshot of one of their favorite parts of the shelves. I, I love taking a peek of stacks and shelves. And before I let you go, and really this book is such a big treat, and I am I was so excited. It really partly, in part, made my summer to know there, uh, there was a new book of yours to read and to look forward okay. to. Thanks and so, so Sue Miller, The Arsonist, what are you reading right now when you have chance, though? I actually read a few things. Um, I read uh, one. I, I went to the VEA, the, the um, book mm-hmm. festival in New York, and picked up uh, several things. And I read, um, just read an, an Ian McEwen book that's not out yet. Um, called uh, the child, the child action, I think it is. Okay, anyway, good to know. It's a book about um, the law and children, and mm-hmm. and I very short and very interesting. And I'm also reading the new book by. Um, oh God, it's, my brain is just shot. That's okay. But it's about Margaret Mead, and it's and I cannot think of the, the name of okay. it. Okay. Well, we'll look it up. We'll find it. Margaret Mead. Yeah, new book about Margaret Mead. About Margaret Mead. About Margaret Mead. Right, about her. Right. Oh, okay. Um, Well, that's the best thing about just, you know, in two seconds, you just put it in Google and then pops that title. And if not that one, another one that's probably interesting also. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I always like to know what everybody's reading. And I wish you well on the rest of this tour. And um, I will post this up on, you can put this on your website afterwards. And I thank you so much for your time. Sue Miller, the arsonist, all the best. Thank you so much, Robin.